welcome everybody to this channel called read and ad thank you for joining me and i'm happy and i'm glad for taking your time your amazing and precious time to watch this video today it's all about behind the scene of every relationship behind the scene of every relationship let's dive deep and see what happened that is the most important thing Sometimes we see the lovers around, having fun, holding hands, laughing up and down. Hey, Charlie, is that all? Definitely no. So let's dive deep. So I have a question from one of my amazing and my fun best friend, a bestie. And the question goes like this. What can you do if your partner tends to disrespect you frequently? That is a good and amazing question. Thank you for answering the question. I wish I could mention your name. But yeah, I didn't ask you first. So maybe next time I'll ask you if it's possible to mention your name here. Um, so this is how it goes. If your partner disrespects you frequently, do they know they, res they disrespect you? Are they aware of disrespecting you? Have you tell them? How many times have you tell them? In what way did you tell them? It's also important. Sometimes we think of the problem. It's good to see the problem, to think about the problem. What causes the problem? What can I do to stop the problem? It's one of the most important things. You think about the thing and you know that, okay, this is what causes the problem. This is what I can do to help and solve the problem. It doesn't mean the moment you just complain to your partner that, oh yeah, you're disrespecting me, what you did, I didn't like. But what did you do for the person to disrespect you? Okay, I'm by spill. If I'm asking something from you as a friend, as my best friend, I can just go ahead and like, yo, silly, um, I want to come for your laptop tomorrow. Oh, silly. I want to come for um, your phone tomorrow to do something or I want to boss up in the studio. And less than when you're talking to a stranger or a person you don't even, you don't really know. That's how it goes. Um, please, if it's possible, may I come to the studio tomorrow? Or if it's possible, may you borrow me your laptop? That is different. To where I come from, and to my point of view, if I talk to my girlfriend or my partner or my best friend this way, oh, bro, um, I need your laptop to do something. It's not disrespect. To my point of view, it's not disrespect. But maybe you might find it offensive based on where you grew up or whatever your thought might be. It doesn't mean the person is disrespecting you. You have to get to know the person and understand their point of view. And you only feel more disrespected from other people's opinion or the way they approach you because you think of only yourself and how you feel and how you think things should work. And do you consider how they also think about how things should work? That is the point. So if you think of all this, then you know that, okay, this person is not rather disrespecting me, but it's based on the friendship we have. We can literally say everything, anything to each other at any time, depending on the relationship you are having with the person. So not to waste much time, um, let's jump into question number two. How can you stay pure if your partner doesn't have the zeal to so if your partner doesn't have the zeal to are you sure they don't have the zeal to this is the thing why don't they have the zeal to maybe they are addicted to smoking and you are with them you love the person you care about the person they have been doing it for so many years you can't just use one day to change them. They are not car that you switch off and on. They are not light 
you switch off and on. No. It takes time. It takes work. It takes dedication. It takes patience. Are you patient enough? Do you really love this person as you claim to love? Then you need time. You need patience. You need dedication. Put work in and it's going to work. You have to start from somewhere. They drink one pack a day. Okay, let's make it this way. Um, baby, if you can drink two or if you can take two pack, um, they drink one pack a day. So if you can take just that two piece, the pieces, if you can take two pieces a day, that would be really nice for me. Try, you know, try and amend things. Try and negotiate with them. I hope you're understanding my point. You try to negotiate with them, then you see how things will turn out. But you don't just turn up out of the blue and just say, yo, because of this, because of that, blah, 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 um, I'm not doing it or I'm not accepting it. No, if you do that, it's never going to work because the person you're going to meet next also have their own challenges and problems. Everybody have their own. Everybody have problems facing, but it takes the real person to stand up for their partner. Thank you. I hope you do understand. So the next question goes like this. How can you prevent misunderstanding? into how can you prevent misunderstanding you know from turning into an argument how can you prevent misunderstanding from turning into an argument and this is very simple but most people find it difficult to do it doesn't matter the person is a female or a male it's just sometimes difficult to do and this is how you're gonna start to prevent something from happening. It's within you yourself and in your mind. You got to think, okay, this is what the person is saying or doing that I don't like. That can turn into fight. Example was the like the disrespect. The first question. Okay, they are doing this and it's disrespect to me. So what can I do that I will not turn this into fight? Call the person out on a date. Call the person out and talk to them. And not because you are pissed off, you talk with an anger in the motion. Like, disrespect comes in so many ways. Sometimes you think you are not disrespecting them because you are not opening your mouth to talk. But when somebody is talking to you, your facial, you know, expression, you know, the eye contact, rolling your eye, kind of like... All those stuff, you know, sucking your teeth and um, doing some kind of body action because it doesn't make sense to you doesn't mean it doesn't make sense to the person. If you stop seeing yourself that you are always right, you're going to understand the other partner because they are coming from somewhere. And they know what they are doing. They have been looking out for themselves till you met them. So you don't just budge into or go into a relationship expecting everything should just work out like um, coming down from the mountains, just sloping like that. No, you got to work your way out. You got to fight the obstacles on the way. That's one thing you have to make sure that you're going to fight. You're going to push through. So with the whole conclusion, you stop the fight by, by, by not um, fighting back or retaliating what the person is doing, but rather trying to find a solution to it. And you not finding a solution to a problem doesn't mean you should react the same thing. No, because two wrong can never make right. So my best way of preventing argument is taking a break holding myself in not reacting to every situation take my time whenever the when, when i see that okay today this person is in a good mood this person is in the right mood then i come all out baby you know i really love you and i do care about you i think of you a lot i can't do without you 
You are all I want. You're my dream. You're my future and my present. But this thing you're doing, trust me, last time you really did hurt me. And I don't want it. You know, you have to talk in a way for the person to feel like they will feel what you feel automatically. But not because you are hurt. You just stand up with some tone, you know, kind of trying to express yourself in anger way. It's never going to work. You are not even matured for a relationship. If you're matured, you're going to understand that obstacles are going to come. We're going to face them together. We're going to fight our way through. So, um, and one of the cases are like this. Okay. Whenever the person, like there is an argument, I want to break up. They want to break up. They want to go. They want to leave. You have to go and bring them back in and forth. You know what that happens? The partner loses more confidence in you. You know why? Because if this is happening and you are leaving, what if we get married? What if something happened bad? Are you going to leave? What if we come across bigger challenges? What is going to happen next? Can the partner depend on you? A person who wants to leave just every two seconds? A partner who will just like ignore you because they have problem with you? Ignoring is not solving the problem. You have to be vulnerable to the person. You have to be committed, dedicated. It doesn't matter the situation at ground. If you begin to understand this and know where the person is coming from and understand their point of view and not knowing you are the only person who is right, then trust me, everything is going to work out perfectly. But if you think you are always right and you are the best in what you are doing, so nobody corrects you and you don't feel like you have to apologize or you don't feel like um, this situation is like I'm better than this. No, you're not better than anything. Okay, you are better than that. The person is better than this. What happens? Break up. The next relationship will be the same thing. Nobody's perfect. You got to understand that nobody is perfect. So at that part that they are not perfect, what are you going to do to solve that problem? Because your partner is always counting on you when challenges come for you to be there for them, for you to support them. These are some of the challenges they say in relationship. These are some of the challenges that happen in marriage. When we go broke, when something happens, when we fall in debt, when our business collapse, is this person going to support me? Is this person going to be there? You are saying you're going to be there, but are your actions proven? Sometimes we tend to blame our partners. One thing I have learned not to do is to blame. But rather the problem happening, looking at it really critically and checking if what I'm doing wrong or right. And sometimes it doesn't matter what I do wrong or right. You need peace. You love this person. You just have to keep that peace and maintain it. What you do is to apologize. Apologizing doesn't mean you are always wrong. No. Because you believe in the person, one day it will change. One day faith will come. God will answer that prayers. So you being there and supporting the person and having faith in the person doesn't mean you are a fool, you are an idiot, or you don't know what you are doing. You do know what you are doing. I am here just to share my opinion. I'm not here to make you break up with your partner. I'm not here to tell you how to break up. That wouldn't be part of my discussion. Because my religion doesn't tell me to break up with other people, but rather to make peace, to pray for our neighbors and even our enemies. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for spending the time with me. May God richly bless you. May you have a wonderful week ahead. I love you. See you in the next one. If you have a question, please comment down below. Let me know what you think about all the questions that I ask. And how you solve your problem. How you deal with your partner. 
how you deal with your partner is most of them one of the most important thing that we have to all learn from each other so put it in the comment down and then subscribe share with your friend and tell a friend to tell another friend that we boss up the place one love god bless you